episode. Hello, and welcome to our, we're going to be talking about hydrophilic surface treatments. Thank you for joining us. I hope you are all doing well, you're safe, and you're working your way through this uh, pandemic that's obviously created a challenging 2020. Uh, today, hopefully, we're going to share with you some interesting information and some technology about hydrophilic treatments. My name is Edward Hughes. I'm the CEO of Aculon, and I'm joined with me today with two colleagues, Dr. Eric Bruner, who is the president and founder of Aculon, and Mary Gattuso, senior business development manager. The uh, logistics for today are fairly straightforward. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and it will be available uh, to you later on. Uh, so you can share that link to, uh, to colleagues uh, who you think may have some interest in this uh, webinar. Uh, also, uh, it's going to be interactive. So please uh, ask questions uh, in the uh, GoToMeeting question tab. Uh, so type them in and we'll try and leave enough time at the end of it to uh, tackle as many questions as possible. Uh, at Aculon, our goal is very simple. Uh, we enable customers to make better products by being an innovative, responsive, and fast developer and producer of best-in-class surface modification technologies. We believe together we can create winning products. During this uh, brief 30-minute uh, webinar, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Aculon, talk a little bit about a couple of technology platforms, and then turn this over to uh, Eric Brunner to talk really about some of the surface modification options, hydrophilic applications, uh, and then we'll talk about how we work with companies in terms of uh, providing lab services as well as uh, production of chemistry, and then try and tackle as many questions uh, as we can. As a company, we are involved in a lot of different spaces, whether it's consumer electronics, whether it's consumer applications, industrial oil and gas, medical devices. As you can see from this uh, slide here, uh, we cover a lot of different spaces and a lot of time uh, to look at you know, these various surfaces uh, and to come up with some solutions. The company was founded in 2004. And our expertise really is all about developing and producing surface solutions to modify a broad variety of surfaces, metals, glass, polymers. Uh, we offer a variety of functionalities with our chemistries. It could be hydrophobic or super hydrophobic, oleophobic, hydrophilic, which we'll be talking about today, and anti-fingerprinting, as well as we offer some adhesion promotion technologies as well. Our treatments are thin. Uh, they are easy to apply. They're not applied via vacuum chambers. Uh, they are often can be applied without requiring a cure schedule. Uh, they're non-toxic and we offer a number of green options as well. Uh, how we differentiate ourselves from some of the larger chemical companies is that uh, we not only create proprietary innovative treatments, uh, but we really work with customers to help solve the problems. Uh, we don't believe in just throwing a product over the wall and saying, good luck, hopefully this is going to work for you. Uh, we take time to really understand our customers' problems and see if we can come up with the right solution for them. As a business, we're organized into uh, three different areas, electronics, oil and gas, and especially, especially includes medical and industrial type applications, as well as a number of uh, consumer products. Our business model is that we produce chemistry and sell chemistry. In some cases, we will treat parts in-house, often uh, in the early stages in lab services, etc., to get parts qualified. Uh, but the vast majority of what we do is we pr produce the chemistry and ship that to uh, the uh, uh, place where it's going to be applied, whether it's the OEM or whether it's a contract manufacturer and we'll ship that globally. Uh, we have uh, a strong IP portfolio with over 37 patents grounded. Uh, we've worked on thousands of applications and invested hundreds of thousands of hours, all related to surface modification. We have over 100 products. Uh, people are smart, numerous chemists with PhDs, master's degrees, electrical, mechanical engineers, uh, and we are global in, in nature. We are headquartered here in San Diego, California. Uh, that's where we do our headquartered uh, lab and some manufacturing. Uh, we have offices in Shanghai, Singapore, Dallas, and Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, in Asia in particular, we have a, a pretty good uh, network of distributors. So let's talk about hydrophilic surfaces. So firstly, why do they matter? Well, you know, interaction with surfaces can create problems. So, and we can use hydrophilic tech 
technologies to address a wide variety of these problems. And I've listed out uh, seven of these problems. Uh, on the left-hand side, it could be a functional issue relating to liquid behavior on surface. It could be surface contamination, oils and grease from fingerprints, uh, basically degrades the aesthetic uh, uh, looks of the product that the industrial designers have spent a long time getting right. Uh, it could be water droplets or contaminations has an impact on optical performance. It could be security cameras, other things uh, that basically you know, the optics aren't working properly. Uh, it could be uh, on camera uh, lenses and domes. Uh, it could be that the surface is not lubricious enough. Uh, it could be also that the wettability of a surface or the powder is not ideal. Uh, and finally, it could be that you know uh, you don't want bubbles forming uh, on the surface uh, when it's in an underwater situation. So these are some of the issues that we often encounter in discussions with customers that are looking for hydrophilic uh, type activities. So let me talk a little bit about some of the technologies that we have. Uh, and this is the original technology that the company was founded on. Uh, it's called self-assembled monolayers of phosphonates or SAMPs as we uh, call it. Uh, and that can be applied uh, to a variety of surfaces, uh, but you know what it does is basically it's comprised of a phosphonic acid and, and a repellent carbon-based molecule. Uh, the phosphonic acid reacts with the surface and creates a covalent bond, uh, and then we can functionalize the tail uh, to repel oil and water. Uh, that particular technology is uh, extremely thin. It's less than five nanometers. Uh, in thickness, uh, and it's turned out to be a very versatile technology for us. We've used that on many uh, different applications. Uh, the technology basically works on the basis of a hook and tail type operation where you are basically creating a strong chemical bond into the uh, surface, the metal oxide in this case. Uh, it's chemically resistant, it's thermally stable, uh, and the tail you can basically uh, use to functionalize with a, a variety of different functionalities. Uh, from that basis, uh, as the company grew and kind of worked in different applications, uh, we expanded our range of technologies uh, to include polymeric organometallics, transitional metal complexes, surface polymer, and some hydro and oleophilic uh, technologies more recently. So we've created this series of platforms, uh, all related to surface modification. It could be hydrophobic, it could be adhesion promotion, it could be water barriers, oleophobic, particle treatments, or anti-fingerprinting, or what we're gonna talk about today, which is hydrophilic treatments. So with that, uh, let me uh, ask my colleague, uh, Eric Bruner, to uh, talk a little bit about some of the uh, different hydrophilic surface treatments that he's worked and developed. Thank you, Edward, and thank you for everyone um, and your interest in joining us today. Um, so hydrophilic surface treatments um, have a kind of a wide variety of uses, and we have numerous um, technologies that are capable of imparting um, hydrophilic properties on surfaces. Um, generally, hydrophilic coatings are are water attracting, so that makes water, you know, droplets or flow of water um, spread uniformly across the surface. Um, hydrophilics are um, increase the surface energy and um, are, are really characterized most times by water contact angles. And um, you know, if you have a really hydrophilic surface, it's going to have angles below 10. Um, one of the things that um, Aculon offers in the space is uh, very thin layers. Um, we can uh, deposit layers anywhere from single nanometers, you know, two to four nanometers, all the way up to, you know, tens of microns. And most of what we focus on is optically clear coatings. So they don't affect the optics of the underlying substrate and, um, you know, are, are important for a number of uses because of that. Um, also, our treatments are flexible. Um, they adhere to the underlying substrate. And if the substrate's flexible, uh, the treatments are as well. And um, with our treatments, we can coat nearly um, most substrates, you know, whether they're glass, metal, uh, ceramics, and a lot of different polymers, functional polymers. And so therefore, there's um, quite a few applications. Um, most of the um, applications, the first question we ask is, what is the substrate? And so based on the substrate, that drives the options that are available. Um, and how we can react with those surfaces. So um, we have um, several classes of compounds um, and we'll, we'll choose those based on, on both the substrate and the requirements. So 
the metals, there are TMCs, uh, we can grow polymers, and there's a kind of a class we call polymeric organometallics. On um, a lot of polymers, which are especially important for um, some medical applications, we can use um, transition metal complexates. Um, we can once again grow surface polymers, which allows us to kind of tailor the surface properties. And then we have, um, we have our polymeric uh, systems as well. So um, in characterizing hydrophilic properties, a lot of times water contact angles are used. Um, this slide um, illustrates what this is. So it's, it's really the angle in which the water beads up. And when you make a surface hydrophilic, you'll see the water droplet lay down and kind of flatten out on the surface. And so you'll see um, a lot of times untreated angles have a pretty drastic change. You know, on polymer surface, a lot of times we'll, we'll be taking angles from like 65 to 80 down to you know, less than 10 degrees. Another important aspect of our technology is our durability. Um, it's, it's one thing to just lay down something that's hydrophilic on a surface. It's quite another to have good chemical bonding or covalent bonds that are formed. Um, and with that comes um, a number of things. That's not only just abrasion resistance where, you know, it's durability um, exposed to, you know, whether it's um, mechanical abrasion or different types of fluid resistance. Um, but also, you know, a lot of our systems are designed to withstand um, higher temperatures. Most of them can withstand between um, 20, or sorry, 200 to 300 C, um, kind of depends on the underlying uh, materials that, that we're attaching. And then um, with good bonding comes stability. Um, a lot of times we're, you know, as stable as the underlying substrate. And so if you've got a resistant substrate, then a lot of times we have um, very good chemical resistance. And for some of the, um, especially for some of the outdoor applications, it's important to look at uh, UV resistance. And so we have some nice um, UV stable formulations. In terms of application process, um, this is also a kind of a nice ad advantage uh, with some of Aculon's technology is, is that there's, you know, everything we do is solution phase applied. So that means you can use a, kind of a wide range of, of deposition techniques, whether it's dip applied, being dispensed um, either by um, you know automated machine or manually, flow coating, um, spraying whether it's airless or atomized um, sprays, um, and so that gives kind of a wide variety of different ways to deposit the, the materials. And some of the key parameters we'll look at is um, you know what the thickness needs to be, and therefore kind of what concentration we need to have. Um, we have different solvents we can use. In some cases, we can get to um, BOC exempt solvents. Um, and then also, you know, coverage if you want it patterned or um, in one location, but not another. Um, and then um, temperature and curing cycles. So all of these things can be taken into account depending on um, any sort of preferred application process. So we focus in three kind of primary areas. Um, electronics, oil and gas, and specialty, which includes a lot of uh, medical applications. So in the electronics space, um, we do quite a few things um, in the um, area of um, you know, laptops and appliances packaging. A lot of times we're looking for tailoring surface properties to um, repel um, fingerprints or provide hiding power. And so we, um, a lot of times we'll mix in different types of treatments, including hydrophilics, and uh, that'll allow us to hide fingerprints. And um, in that space, you know, one of the important things is to look at the overall finish. Um, a lot of times we can get to better hiding power by, by using matte finishes, um, which kind of helps hide them through diffuse reflectance. And then, of course, color is an important um, part of um, light absorption and therefore affects um, whether and how sensitive um, the perception of fingerprints is. So, um, you know, once again, with some of the Aculon technologies, we're, we, we can make these very thin, which is um, important to be optically clear. And then, um, also, we can tailor the properties of the coating to 
help um, you know tune the surface properties and um, either um, you know hide the oils or make the surfaces easy to clean. Um, in this case, it's hydrophobic behavior that we typically look for, where we're we're making uh, repelling the um, materials and like fingerprints and making them easy to remove. And you know what we always look for is is chemical bonding and making things durable. So a little bit more on um, AFP. You know, we a lot of times we'll, we'll look at um, um, overall, just look at um, the appearance of surfaces and um, what kind of surface we're dealing with, whether it's matte and has lots of um, diffuse reflection or um, glossy surfaces where um, you know they're very shiny and and you need to use different types of treatments depending on what the finish is. And um, we have the kind of the power to be able to tailor surfaces and their properties. Um, also, you know, a lot of surfaces have, dip, have different colors. And depending on what the color is, um, you're going to choose a different type of surface treatment. Um, for lighter colors, which um, tend to reflect more, more light, um, you can focus on, um, you know, improving cleanability. Whereas on the darker colors, which tend to show a higher level of, of um, dirt or debris or fingerprints, um, you know, a lot of times we need to focus on, on the hiding power. And so based on the color, we can um, tailor the solution to um, provide the best possible performance. So in oil and gas, um, Believe it or not, uh, hydrophilic treatments are, are quite important. Um, with hydrophilic treatments, um, you can um, repel oil. Um, and so we've got a number of treatments that can either repel oil from containment booms or in a lot of different equipment. Um, a lot of the windows, sapphire windows, and other types of equipment that are used in the field, you, know, you don't want the oil sticking. And so we can help do that. Um, also, uh, anti-fog uh, is, is an important area, um, you know, preventing condensation on lenses. In the anti-fouling area, there's um, not only oil containment booms, but a lot of different sensors and other places where oil accumulation is an issue. Um, the fact that our treatments are, are usually chemically bonding to the surface makes them durable and robust and survive a lot of ingress aggressive environments. And um, last but not least is our specialty division, which um, does a lot of things in the medical space, um, quite a few anti-fog applications, and interesting enough, um, bubble repellency in a lot of fluidic devices. So in um, medical devices, um, hydrophilic surface treatments can functionalize a wide variety of, of substrates. And many times that's to increase lubricity um, and re reduce the coefficient of friction. So to make um, one thing or another slide across the surface easier, um, whether that's in um, capillary, you know, catheters or, um, you know, places where you want um, proteins or bl blood to not stick, um, you know, also increasing the wettability of fluids across polymers and other diagnostic um, surfaces can be very important. And um, the fact that most of our coatings are um, bonded to the substrate um, and not necessarily, um, you know, heavily cross-linked allows them to be flexible. And so there's a lot of different sort of flexible substrates that can use our treatments as well. Also, a lot of um, need for anti-fog in the market, whether it's um, security domes where you don't want a security camera to be um, blinded by fogging or condensation, or whether it's um, you know other types of optics, um, sensors, and other um, places, uh, whether it's ski goggles or prescription eyewear. Um, you, you, there's a lot of different places where you don't want fogging and um, fogging is um, actually due to the water con condensating and beating up. So by spreading the water out and making it even across the surface, you prevent the fog. And so we have a number of different treatments that are 
UV stable, very durable, and um, do a great job of anti-fog. And this is an interesting one, um, bubble repellency. So actually most of, you know, the gas air that's, you know, whether it's oxygen or nitrogen um, is, um, is hydrophobic. It's, um, and so it tends to be attracted to hydrophobic surfaces. So when you make a surface hydrophilic, it repels those, those gases. And so it helps release the bubbles. And so there's a number of fluidic applications and sensors where if you have a bubble on the surface, it interferes from with the detection or it interferes with um, um, how the device works. And so um, if you're needing um, to repel air bubbles, we can help you. Great, uh, thanks, Eric. That's uh, as you can tell, we've we've looked at a lot of different applications. Uh, we've worked on a lot of different surfaces, and uh, developed a number of hydrophilic technologies. Uh, as I said at the start, we're the kind of company that uh, we really want to help our customers hit the target, um, and so we go through a relatively disciplined process of evaluating this. Uh, so we really start with asking a lot of questions from from our customers on what are your expectations? What is the surface gonna see? What kind of abrasion? What kind of chemical resistance do you need? So we can really you know, make sure that we are providing an option that's gonna meet the requirements that's gonna be uh, for this particular device or application in the field. Uh, we will then use our lab services to uh, test that, get some substrate in for you, uh, test that to see how that's working. We'll analyze it, we'll characterize that, uh, we'll provide those uh, substrates back to you so that you can test and provide some feedback. Uh, if there's some optimization that needs to play, take place, we can do that. And at the end of it, hopefully we'll have a uh, selection of which chemistry meets your requirements and a recommendation for the process and the application, how it's done. Uh, and that should enable you to have a, a plant trial. Uh, and if that plant trial works, then obviously, you know, we hope you hit the target. Uh, so as I say, we go through a, a relatively disciplined process here rather than just, you know, sending out chemistry and, and you know, wishing you good luck with this. Uh, we'd rather kind of walk through it together and make sure that we're providing something that uh, that works for you. Uh, uh, as a company, we've got a pretty good amount of IP and expertise. I mean, as we have uh, lots of patents. We've got lots of uh, trade secrets. Uh, we've treated and tested thousands of applications. Uh, we've got a good partnership here with the University of California, San Diego, that allows us to uh, some very sophisticated testing equipment uh, that is, is great to have for some uh, more challenging applications. Uh, we've spent hundreds of thousands of hours solving surface related problems. Uh, we've invested millions of dollars in building these capabilities and expertise. Uh, so, you know, we, we like to think we really are surface solution experts here. Uh, we also have developed a number of sustainable options. Uh, many of our customers now are looking for a greener, more sustainable option uh, than the previous uh, solution that they had. Uh, so we have developed a number of options that are VOC exempt or the POFO free. Uh, we use uh, eco packaging and waste reduction techniques. Obviously, uh, you know, we try to make the transportation as efficient as possible. And, and, you know, even in our facilities, we use sustainable energy and, you know, uh, to increase efficiency, whether it's LED lighting uh, and other techniques to basically uh, try and be a good uh, global citizen uh, of the planet here. So uh, in conclusion, uh, before I get to questions, uh, we are a platform technology company that is all about making our customers' products better. Uh, we are surface solutions experts. We've spent a lot of time and money at building up that expertise. Uh, and we have a strong history of working with customers to solve problems. Uh, our best customer relationships are the ones that last for many years uh, because they view us as their development partner. Uh, and you know, we've helped solve problems for them. And in doing so, we've, we've built a broad portfolio of products, uh, including a number of more sustainable options. Uh, and we've developed a strong IP and testing capability, whether it's in-house, whether it's UCSD, uh, that can help solve a number of issues that are out there. So that gives you a quick overview of uh, Aculon and a little bit about some of our hydrophilics. Uh, so let me now try and open up the question box and see if we have some questions. Here we go. 
Uh, okay, Eric, somebody asked, what are TMCs? I guess we use a lot of acronyms. Oh yeah, sorry for not <laughs> explaining that better. It, that, it, that stands for transition metal complexate. And what that, um, what that really means is we can take a kind of a, a broad range of different types of polymers and we have a reactive organometallic um, that will bond with it and also bond to the surface. So it, it acts as a binder. And so it's um, kind of a platform technology that involves um, transition metals. Okay, uh, next question again for you, Eric. What are the types of materials available for hydrophilic treatment? Polymer, nano-ceramic coatings, or other type? Okay, so, um, I mean, we have our own set of hydrophilic coating offerings. Um, there's, there's quite a few things that you can look at. Um, I guess I'd probably need to understand the application to to help select what type of material would be the most appropriate. Um, but um, some of our our products are, um, you know, kind of have different types of properties, and we would we would want to kind of down select based on the application. Okay. All right. Um, next one. In your experience, do you feel a hydrophilic coating could be applied to a fabric substrate? Uh, definitely. Um, yeah, the fabrics and textiles um, can be modified to make them both uh, water repellent as well as water attractive. So, um, yeah, we can do that. And um, whether it's nylon, cotton, polyester, um, really any sort of functional uh, polymer we can we can bond to and we can make them hydrophilic. Okay. Uh, and then I got a pretty specific question about somebody asking, can it be used, uh, hydrophilic be used on stainless steel to protect from graffiti? Yes, um, actually stainless steel is one of our um, most common substrates. We, we modify it for kind of a broad variety of things. A lot of times for graffiti, um, we'll look at repellency rather than hydrophilics. Um, we'll, we'll usually use something that's both oil and water repellent to get good um, paint um, repellency. So we, we might head in the other direction on that one. But if you know if someone did want to make uh, stainless steel hydrophilic, we can do that. Yeah, I think that that's right. We we use as an example on stainless steel, if uh, a Sharpie pen, uh, obviously on a uh, untreated stainless steel, you put a Sharpie pen down, you get a solid black line. Uh, if you uh, put a Sharpie pen onto a, a, a hydrophobic treated uh, stainless steel, then it just beads up and you can wipe it straight off. So I think, you know, graffiti, I agree with Eric, it's going to be more in the hydrophobic type uh, uh, application. All right, next question. Uh, what kind of coating solutions do you have for silicone surfaces? Oh, uh, silicone is, um, that's a difficult one to bond to, depending on what the abrasion uh, resistance um, needs are. We might have to take a two-step approach. Direct bonding to silicone is a bit challenging. Um, if it's just a wetting application, that's easy. But if it's one that requires high durability, we might have to take a, a more complicated approach, but it is it is possible. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Gosh, a lot of questions coming in, so I'll scroll back up to that one. Uh, do we produce uh, our own finishes or are they toll manufactured? Yes, uh, we, we are the manufacturer of our, our treatments. Uh, we don't really call them finishes. Uh, most of what we do is uh, is optically clear, except for maybe in uh, some of the uh, printed circuit board uh, water repellency type things. So, uh, so one of the nice things about Echelon's treatments, and particularly when somebody asks earlier about stainless steel, it has no impact on the uh, aesthetic uh, appeal of the stainless steel. So, but we do, yes, we do manufacture our own products. Uh, Okay, so very good question here. Are these products best for single-use applications or can they be used in multi-use long-term applications? So I guess that really comes back to the question really around durability. So, uh, you know, so can some of these things be uh, 
yeah, abraded on, or are they like some of the super hydrophobic treatments where you, you can't really touch them? I'm sorry, Eric. That was um, yeah, if that was a question for me. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got both. Yeah, we've got some um, treatments that we'll do for single use. Um, some that'll just be for like whether it's like a medical diagnostic kit that just needs to wet a biological fluid um, for a short one-time application, and then we have other applications where you know security cameras will be out in the field for you know ten years. So um, it really depends on the substrate and the requirements, but we have a um, kind of a broad range of treatments that we can select based on what the application requirements are. Okay. Uh, another question is, would you classify your products as additive, additives into other polymeric solutions? So generally, uh, uh, hydrophilic treatments or other treatments are uh, kind of separate treatments that go on there, but I know, Eric, you've looked at uh, uh, doing things as additives as well, so maybe you can talk a bit about that. Yeah, the additives part, at least for um, hydrophilics, has been pretty limited. Um, we do have some adhesion promoters that can be added into hydrophilic treatments, but they're that's kind of a separate animal. Um, yeah, it's um, if there's an additive that's needed to help bonding, that might be something we can help with. But um, we haven't seen too many applications where we're just taking a hydrophilic additive and, and putting them into a system. Okay. Uh, okay. So another question here relates to: Can this be done in a continuous process versus a batch process? So I'm assuming they're talking about uh, you know versus some chemical vapor deposition processes that are done in chambers. Uh, yes, most of these can be applied in a continuous process, a spray uh, type process, uh, or a dip based process, and so. Uh, uh, it's pretty flexible and it's it's designed for high volume manufacturing. Um, all right, another question: When you make a surface hydrophilic, how long is the working time, specifically in harsh conditions? I'm going to hand this one to you, Eric, and I know you're going to say do you have to define what the harsh condition is. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, it's it's always a question of the environment, but one general rule of thumb for most of our treatments is we're as durable as the underlying substrate. So if you have something like iron, for example, which is very sensitive to both acids and bases, that um, you know, that's that's pretty challenging for us. But if you're working with sapphire or stainless steel or a substrate that's very um, durable, um, then you know when we're chemically bonded to a very durable or resistant um, substrate, then the, the treatments um, pretty good. So it's it's not only the environment, it's also the underlying substrate and how it acts in that environment. Okay, great. All right, and the, uh, the last question is, uh, can we get an email address? Somebody wants to talk about a specific uh, application. Uh, yes, so Mario will be following up with a email to all the uh, registered attendees uh, with a link to uh, uh, the recording of this webinar, to a copy of the uh, PowerPoint presentation that will be on our website, uh, and also his uh, email contact address. Uh, so if somebody or anybody has uh, questions, uh, then um, uh, you know, please feel free to uh, email them uh, to, uh, to Mario and he'll get them to the, uh, to the right person. Uh, and I know there's a couple more questions coming in, but I think we're kind of uh, just a few minutes over. Uh, so I want to kind of end this webinar and thank you guys for uh, attending today. I hope this was useful. Thank you, Eric, for your uh, you know, walking us through the technologies and some of the applications. Uh, and uh, again, this webinar will be posted on our uh, website. And uh, feel free to contact us to basically uh, ask any questions. And, and I hope that we can uh, help you solve uh, any problems you have on your surface and help uh, make your products better. So with that, uh, I want to thank you very much, and we'll be ending the webinar. Thank you.